earlier in this section, we created our custom middleware class. We are calling it my middleware. And in order to create this custom middleware class, we need to inherit this I middleware interface. And when we inherit this I middleware interface, it enforces us to implement invoke async method. So this is how we created our custom middleware class. Now, in order to use this middleware as an extension method, here we are creating an extension method with that name. And then we can use this middleware like we are doing here. So here we can directly access that middleware function on an instance of iApplication Builder. All right, so this is how we create a custom middleware class. Now in ASP.NET Co, we also have another way of creating a custom middleware class. And that is actually a conventional way of creating a custom middleware class. Let me also show you that. So what I'm going to do is inside this custom middleware folder, I'm going to create a new item. So for that, click on this add and then this new item. Now here, instead of selecting a class, you can scroll down somewhere. We should have a template for middleware class. So here you can see we have a template for middleware class. Let's select that and let's rename it. And I will simply call it another custom middleware. Okay. Let me click on this add button and you can see here we have this namespace middleware dot custom middleware and inside that we have a class called another custom middleware and in this class we have three things first we have a private field called underscore next then we have a constructor and this constructor is taking an argument of request delegate type now keep in mind that Whenever this another custom middleware will be instantiated, an instance of request delegate type will be injected by ASP.NET Co. We don't need to provide that. It will be injected by ASP.NET Co. And it will be assigned to this next parameter. And finally, we have this invoke method. And this invoke method is basically the middleware function in this case. So inside this invoke method, you can see we are calling the next function. In the constructor, if you notice, we are assigning this underscore next with the value of this next parameter. And this next parameter is of type request delegate. So basically for this next parameter, we are going to receive the next middleware in the request pipeline. And we are assigning that to this next private field. Then from within this invoke method, we are calling it. So basically here we are calling the next middleware function in the request pipeline. And to that we are also passing this HTTP context. So the difference between this middleware class and this middleware class is that in there, we don't need to define a private next field because we are going to receive it as the second argument for this invoke async method. But when we use the middleware class template there for the invoke method, we are not going to receive any second argument. We are only going to receive one argument of type HTTP context. We are not going to receive any second argument. But in this class, somehow we should know what is the next middleware in the request pipeline so that it can be called. For that, we are creating a private field called underscore next. And then we are initializing it with the next middleware function in the request pipeline by receiving it through dependency injection. Then in order to use this custom middleware class as an extension method, here if you see, we also have an extension method called another custom middleware extension. And in there, we have an extension method called use another custom middleware. So it is a convention to use this use in front of the middleware name. So here the middleware name is another custom middleware. And in front of that, we are using this use by convention. Okay. Now we can go ahead and we can write some logic for this middleware inside this invoke method. So here, let's try to access the context object. Here, the context object name is HTTP context. On that, let's try to access the response object. And there, let's try to add some text in the response body. For that, let's use this write async. Okay. And here, let's add a body. Let's say another custom middleware called. And after this next method is finished executing, Let's add some more text to the response body for that. I will copy this line and let's go ahead and let's paste it here. And here, let's say another middleware finished. 
and here instead of using this return keyword let's remove it from here and here we want to use the await keyword okay from there i removed the return keyword because i don't want it to return from this method after this next method has finished its execution because after this next method i also want to execute some other logic so that's why i removed the return keyword and i want to wait till this next method finishes its execution and after that only i want to move to next line and execute the next line for that i'm using this await keyword here now when i'm using this await keyword i also need to make this method as async so let's use this async keyword all right with this now we want to use this middleware so in order to use this middleware we need to call this name so i'll copy it from here and we can call it on the app object so i will comment this line of code from here so i don't want to call this custom middleware i want to call this new custom middleware which we have just created for that let's say app dot and then the middleware name okay and here also i am going to change these texts so here i will say middleware for called let me copy this and here let's change this text and here let's say middleware one called and in this class we are saying another custom middleware called after that let's provide a line break for that let's say slash n and let's do the same thing here so the execution order is going to be same here in the program.cs you will notice that the first middleware is this middleware so this is the middleware which is going to be executed first from within that we are calling this next method so this next method is going to call the next middleware in the request pipeline the next middleware in the request pipeline is this middleware so it will be called next from within there also we are calling this next method so it is going to call the next middleware in the request pipeline that means this middleware so this middleware will be called this text will be added in the request body then it is going to call the next middleware in the request pipeline the next middleware in the request pipeline is now this middleware so this middleware will be called it will be executed and this text will be added to the response body after that the control will reach back to that middleware from where this middleware was called that means here okay and after that we are again adding some text to the response body so it will be added to the response body and the execution of this middleware function is also complete so now the control will reach to that middleware function from where this middleware was called that means to this middleware 2 okay here and here also since this next method has been executed the execution of this middleware 2 is also complete so now the control will reach to that middleware from where this second middleware was called that means to this middleware and in this way all the middlewares has been executed for the request so let's go ahead and let's run this program and you will notice that the breakpoint has hit in the first middleware so if we step in so for that if i press f10 in the first middleware first we are adding this text in the response body and then we are calling the next method so the next method is going to call the next middleware in the request pipeline and the next middleware in the request pipeline is this middleware right because we have learned that the middlewares are executed in the order in which they are defined in the code so this is the second middleware which has been defined after this middleware so this next function is going to call this middleware now so if i press f10 the control should go inside that middleware function as you can see again if i press f10 these two line breaks will be added to the response body and then if i press f10 again again we are calling the next method so the next method is going to call the next middleware in the request pipeline and the next middleware in the request pipeline is this middleware so now the control should reach to this middleware if i press f10 you will see that now the request has reached to that middleware again in there we are adding some text in the response body and then we are calling the next method so now it is going to call the next middleware in the request pipeline and the next middleware in the request pipeline is this middleware the middleware which we are creating using this run method if i press f10 
again this text will be added in the response body and then this function will return so it will return from where we called this middleware that means to this middleware and in this middleware after this next method has finished its execution we are also adding some more text to the response body so that will be added and then the execution of this middleware is also complete so now we will go back to the second middleware from where we called the third middleware by using this next method and the execution of this middleware is also complete so from here we will move to first middleware as you can see and in this way the execution of all the middlewares are complete so let's go ahead and let's click on this continue button here this breakpoint is again hitting because as i have mentioned earlier browser has first made a request to the root url and after that the browser also automatically makes a request for the fav icon so this breakpoint has hit here because a new request to get the fav icon from the server has been made okay so let's ignore that let's click on this continue button and here you can see first we have middleware one called then we have two line breaks so that is inserted by middleware two and then we can see another custom middleware called so basically this is the third middleware from the third middleware we called the fourth middleware so that has been executed and once the execution of the fourth middleware was complete the control reached back to the third middleware and there we are also adding this text in the response body so that also you will see here and in this way all the middlewares have been executed so this is another way in which you can create a middleware class by using the middleware class template this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day